Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Last night... Last night was the Oscars. Did you watch, did you watch the Oscars? You, you watched it? Did you win your Oscar pool, John? Oh, yeah. I, I, um, I didn't win my Oscar pool. You know, I think I won mine. <laughs> You won. Have, I, I think I've won mine. We don't have all the votes in yet, but I think I won. Yeah. I'll tell you how yeah. I clenched it. How did you do I that? clenched it thanks to Ford versus Ferrari for film editing. Mm. Daddy. Yeah. Boom. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, see? Daddy knows his dad movies. French Connection. French Connection. It was an historic night. Bong Joon Ho's Parasite became the first foreign language yeah. film ever. Ever. To win Best Picture. Oh, Parasite. Unless you count 2018's The Shape of Water, <laughs> which was filmed in the universal language of fish sex. <laughs> now, never actually saw it. I don't know. Now, there was another big winner. It was Taika Waititi, who became the first person of indigenous descent. First person of indigenous descent to win an Oscar for writing, he used his platform to highlight an issue that affects us all. Apple needs to fix those keyboards. Though they are impossible to write on, they've, got, they've gotten worse, and it makes, me, it makes me want to go back to PCs. Yes, it's right. <laughs> it's true, Apple keyboards have gone way downhill. Here's how bad Taika Waititi's keyboard is. When he started his writing career, his name was Tony Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he don't want it. It's over there. I don't want it no more. Give me another keyboard, son. The most memorable acceptance speech was from Best Actor winner and noted vegan Joaquin Phoenix, who said this about working in movies. I think the greatest gift that it's given me and many of us in this room is the opportunity to use our voice for the voiceless. Whether we're talking about gender inequality or racism, or queer rights, or indigenous rights, or animal rights. Well said. Anything else? We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow. OK. <laughs> OK, Joaquin, that sounds horrible. <laughs> but I never went to any of Harvey's parties, and I don't want to know. <laughs> OK? <laughs> that's, not my, that's not my scene. Thank you. Mm. The person who stole the show was 18-year-old Grammy winner Billie Eilish. The camera kept cutting to her in the audience for reaction shots to whatever the old folk on stage were doing. <laughs> like her reaction to a comedy bit from Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph. Lady in red. <laughs> wow. Ow. Ow. That's cold. Ow. Cold Come blood. on, Billie. They're comedy giants. If a cool 18-year-old doesn't know who Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig are, then, oh, no. <laughs> but come on, I'm on TV every night. Surely Billie Eilish knows who I am. Right, Billie? <laughs> I don't know, why would you... Why would you even come to my show, then? If you, why, <laughs> why stand in line? Why stand in line to come to my show if you can't... I don't... It makes no sense. Anyway, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. The Oscars weren't the only big results announced over the weekend. We finally have the results of the Iowa caucus. Kind of, sort of. Mm, mm. They say the winner was former South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg, but there are still some irregularities being worked out. So Iowa Democratic Party Chairman Troy Price called a press conference to reassure everyone that they've got this. If there are mathematical rounding errors, why can't those be adjusted? Because these sheets are signed not only by the precinct chair and the precinct secretary. After that, Price got his head stuck in a five gallon can of Van Camp's pork and beans, <laughs> stumbled blindly into a wheat thresher. Now, a very important difference, Iowa's a caucus. Tomorrow's vote in New Hampshire is the first actual primary of the 2020 election. To make sure there's not a repeat of Iowa, Democrats have hired a new election consultant to tabulate the votes. One, two, three. 
Very popular. Billy, Billy, did you know who that was? Catch you up on the New Hampshire new happenings in tonight's edition of. I have a plan for that. A progressive agenda. I think they will end up being the losers. Fury Road to the White House 2020. Winter Fury! Now, people love Fury Road. It's exciting. Ooh, Fury Road. Got Boom! Who got him up? Go ahead, get into it. Latest polls in New Hampshire are all over the map. Most show Bernie Sanders first, followed by Pete Buttigieg. There was one surprising result. One poll in New Hampshire said New Hampshire Democrats would prefer an extinction causing meteor <laughs> over Trump re election. Oh! Fatal Fury. Oh! Terry Bogle. <laughs> Hey, New Hampshire Democrats, you okay? <laughs> this explains why they've changed the state motto from live free or die to please let us die. <laughs> now, with all the polls relatively tight, the candidates are getting nastier with each other, especially Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg, oh. seen here cosplaying as Father Time and Baby New Year. <laughs> on Saturday, on Saturday, Biden said this about Buttigieg. Is this a act of desperation on your campaign to be oh, making on, this man. You think assertion right now? These guys, like Mayor are, this guy's not Barack Obama. Is Barack Obama the only measure of things that are good? <laughs> oh man, this turkey Reuben is a real Barack Obama. <laughs> but I'll tell you, when I'm done, let's hit the road because the bathroom here is no Barack Obama. <laughs> now. But Barack Obama, Barack Obama. Obama, Obama, Obama. But the strangest moment in Biden's campaign resurrection tour came on Sunday when a voter asked him this. How do you explain the performance in Iowa and why should the voters believe that you can win the national election? It's a good question. Number one, I was a Democratic caucus. There have been no caucus. No, you haven't. You're a lion dog faced pony soldier. What what uh, what's going on inside Biden's head when he comes up with these insults? Hmm, let's see. What should I call her? Uh Devious Squirrel Need Kangaroo Mailman? No, no, no. Uh tricky cat fingered panther chef. No lying dog faced pony soldier. <laughs> Good one, Joe. That insult was a real Barack Obama. <laughs> now, believe it or not... <laughs> oh. <laughs> believe it or not, this was not the first time Biden has used this particular weird insult. He, he had to explain it a couple of years ago at a rally. As my brother, who loves to use lines from movies, a John Wayne movie, there's a line in the movie, the John Wayne movie, where the Indian chief turns to John Wayne and says, this is a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. See? There's a perfectly reasonable rambling explanation. John Wayne and Indian chief. The only problem you could possibly have with this playful dog-faced pony language is that John Wayne's westerns don't include that quote. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, sir. If someone challenges you over that quote, just remember what Brando said in The Godfather. I'm gonna make him an offer with a box of chocolates, you damn dirty ape. <laughs> Billy, Billy, you ever see The Godfather? Take some wrapping. Take some wrapper off the. Take some wrapper off the. There you go. So you brushed your teeth before you ate the hoagie. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> we still have a president 
since Trump got acquitted in his impeachment trial. And now he's ready for revenge on anyone... <laughs> Sorry, too late. <laughs> he's ready for revenge on anyone he believes wronged him. I'll tell you all about it in our brand new segment, The Trump Ire Strikes Back. <laughs> on Friday, on Friday, Donald Trump proved that he's more spite than man when he fired impeachment witnesses Gordon Sondland and Alexander Vindman in a post-acquittal purge. Yes, Trump has gone full strongman. He's making a list of enemies, and he's changed the name of his resort to Maragulago. <laughs> then, Trump proved that revenge is a dish best served stupid. Because <laughs> he also fired Vindman's twin brother, an Army Lieutenant Colonel who worked as a lawyer on the National Security Council staff. Oh, it's always been my fantasy to fire twins. <laughs> you know, everybody... Everybody fantasizes about firing twins. But then you get in there and they're just firing each other. What am I supposed to do? Just sit in the corner and furiously fire myself? <laughs> Trump. You're welcome for that image. Now, I don't want that. Trump also fired ambassador to the EU Gordon Sondland, despite being asked not to by a handful of Republican senators. How dumb are these senators? You voted not to do the one thing that could have taken him down. That's like saying, now that we've gotten rid of all the town silver bullets, that werewolf will really listen to us. <laughs> sit. Sit, werewolf. Sit. Yeah! 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 Kill me! Kill me! I'm okay. I'm okay. In times like this, some people might get depressed, but not me. Because this weekend, there was one bright orange spot. This actual photo of Donald Trump's face, <laughs> seen here, I'm going to guess, after bobbing for french fries. <laughs> now, the, the photo... The photo shows a clear border between Trump's bronzer and the stolen cadaver skin that enshrouds the <laughs> remainder of his head. He looks like Hannibal Lecter when he stole a different person's face to escape from prison. <laughs> Hello, Clarice. I'm a very stable genius. <laughs> but hey, I'm in entertainment. I know what it's like to take a bad headshot. Maybe it's better in black and white. Oh, God! <laughs> it's like... It's like he motorboated a freshly printed newspaper. <laughs> Come here, Marmaduke. <laughs> Whoa. Now, now, for some reason, Trump was upset about this photo, so he tweeted, more fake news. This was photoshopped, obviously, but the wind was strong and the hair looks good. Anything to demean. You know things are bad when Trump is thanking the wind. <laughs> His hair and the wind do not have great history together. <laughs> and what does that mean? What is that? What is that? And hair looks good. That's the definition of narcissism. My face looks like I got a chemical peel at Jiffy Lube, but <laughs> hair looks good. As usual, Donald Trump is lying. That's what he looks like. I've met him. Some nights I wake up screaming. <laughs> earlier today, earlier today, the president met with governors from across the country, and he previewed the event with this tweet. Meeting with U.S. governors in a short while. All states are doing well. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. If you are meeting with him in a short while, how can you already quote them? Thank you, Mr. President, is what the governors will say. And then they'll go on to say, you look so fit. Have you been working out? Also, I totally believe that's your face. <laughs> when he finally did talk to the governors, he went after NATO. NATO, I've gotten... As you know, $130 billion more they will pay because NATO was going down like a rocket ship. Oh, yeah. 
that thing that famously goes down, a rocket ship. <laughs> this is the man who wants to start Space Force. Before we launch any of those rockets into space, let's make sure they're pointed in the right direction. <laughs> space Force! <laughs> But even a crooked lying clock tells the truth twice a day. We're doing a lot of things that are very uh, good, including waste and fraud. Tremendous waste and tremendous fraud. Yes. It's true. It's true. That is happening. It's true. Coincidentally, tremendous waste and tremendous fraud are Trump's nicknames for Eric and Don Jr. <laughs> now, tremendous what a waste. Tremendous waste. Tremendous fraud. Trump and the governors had an event last night where the military band performed, and of course, Trump turned a compliment about them into a brag about himself. I don't know if anybody has uh, an ear for music. Believe it or not, a long time ago, I was told to have a great ear for music by somebody. <laughs> I took a test. They said he has a wonderful aptitude for music. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's see some of that aptitude for music. Bean Acres is the place to be. For me, land spreading out so far and wide. Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. Yeah, he really, he really got an ear, really got an ear. He really captured that farm feeling. He sounded just like a cow being artificially inseminated. Oh. Billy, you like that joke? <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Sean Oliver is here. Stick around. Hey, you miss a little, you miss a lot.